Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on this Wednesday night. And we begin tonight with that very welcome news today, perhaps a real weapon now in the battle against COVID-19. Tonight, the new findings from the NIH on the antiviral drug remdesivir showing promise in speeding up recovery. Dr. Anthony Fauci said the drug is effective at blocking the virus, calling the results highly significant. And he said this will set a new standard of care. Of course, this is different from a vaccine. It doesn't prevent it but it shows the potential for real promise in treating it. And it comes amid the steady rise in the number of lives lost in this country, a sobering new milestone tonight. More than 60,000 Americans now dead, 2,000 more since just yesterday. Dr. Fauci at the White House today, optimistic about remdesivir, though saying more testing needs to be done. The FDA tonight now promising to fast track it into use. It comes as at least 11 states have already lifted restrictions, seven more to follow by the end of this week. And of course, it all comes amid concerns about any potential second wave or rebound of the virus. In New York, 330 more deaths in just the past 24 hours. And in Brooklyn, that image coming in tonight from a funeral home overwhelmed. They found a grim scene there today, authorities, bodies overflowing inside. Massachusetts and Illinois still in the middle of the surge and EMT crew on the front lines there today answering calls in Skokie, Illinois. And that grim news on the economy, the biggest contraction since the recession. And we wanted to know about the workers in states where they're about to lift these orders. Will they still be eligible for benefits or do they have to go back to work? We'll have answers on all of this for you tonight. And we begin here with ABC's Tom Yamas right here in New York. Tonight, fresh hope in the fight against coronavirus. The country's top infectious disease doctor, Anthony Fauci, announcing at the White House early trial results of the drug treatment remdesivir shows promise. The data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut significant positive effect in diminishing the time to recovery. This is really quite important. It's highly significant. The drug, originally tested for Ebola, now showing in an NIH study it may be effective against COVID-19. What it is proven is that a drug can block this virus. Certainly it's a, it's a positive, it's a very positive event. The research now needs to be peer-reviewed. For weeks we've heard from patients who have recovered from the virus after using remdesivir. COVID-19 put 55-year-old father Chris Kane in the hospital with a high fever. He was put on oxygen. That's when he was offered the drug. I was feeling pretty bad, so I said, sure, let's give it a shot. Can you remember the moment the medication kicked in? I woke up in the morning and I could breathe and it still hurt, but, you know, it, it had dropped off quite a bit. So, yeah, I, it was like a, it was literally two days later when all of a sudden I went, wow, I'm, I'm feeling better. Kane says in his case, he felt no side effects. The drug will now be offered to all patients. Whenever you have clear-cut evidence that a drug works, you have an ethical obligation to immediately let the people who are in the placebo group know so that they could have access. And all of the other trials that are taking place now have a new standard of care. And in the race towards a vaccine, pharma giant Pfizer announcing their vaccine could be tested as early as next week and available for emergency use in the fall. Effective vaccine and treatments could not come soon enough. The death toll topping 60,000, more American lives lost than in the Vietnam War. And the CDC now says the number of deaths in seven states hard hit by the virus is 9,000 higher than earlier reported. It could be another you know, year or more before we get really final hard estimates of, of what the burden looks like. States now figuring out how to safely reopen. 11 states have already eased restrictions. Seven more states will by the end of the week. And tonight in New York, a grim reminder of the devastating toll. The streets around this Brooklyn funeral home closed after neighbors complained about a stench from bodies stored in trailers. The funeral director saying they have run out of space. This as city officials in New York are urging residents to practice social distancing after crowds gathered to watch the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds fly over. And overnight, mourners packed the streets of Brooklyn for an Orthodox Jewish funeral. The mayor warning they could make arrests. We have to understand what it means to hold a large gathering in New York City today. It, it means, unfortunately, that people go to that gathering, some will be sick with this disease. It's just a fact. Every day, 1,000 New Yorkers are still pouring into hospitals. We don't want to see 1,000 new cases every day. We'd like to see that in the low hundreds. 
still weary doctors and nurses celebrating every victory against this disease. I, I am a coronavirus survivor and uh, thanks for everybody that saved my life and I'm going home today. 75 year old Sonia Atia was put on a ventilator at Mount Sinai, Queens. She came to us initially with uh, shortness of breath. She could barely breathe. On her granddaughter's sixth birthday, after two weeks, Sonia wheeled out of that hospital to cheers, able to head home to reunite with her family. Oh, we love that image. Tom with us again tonight, and Tom with these promising early results for remdesivir. I can only imagine folks at home are wondering tonight uh, how easily they'll be able to get this if they need it, if they come down with the virus. David, on the heels of that announcement, the makers of the drug say they expect to meet and exceed their production goals. We're talking about more than 100,000 medical treatment courses by May, more than 500,000 by October. Now, medical experts we spoke to tonight say those are very good numbers. And the patient we spoke to, David, tells us he received the drug via an IV every day. David, he said it was like his morning coffee.